Hi, uh, I'm Michael Bartlett and uh, I've been running for about five years now and I'm training for a goal of a 135 uh, half marathon in Myrtle Beach on October 17th. Hey, my name is Jack Stevenson. Uh, I've been running for uh, on and off about 20 years, but more seriously here in the last uh, four to five years and everything he just said, 135 Myrtle Beach in October. Looking forward to it. Hi there. My name is Joel. I'm running the Georgina Marathon on October 17th with a goal of qualifying for Boston with a time of 3 hours, 20 minutes, and 10 seconds. Hey everyone, welcome to Dev Runner. My name is Paul. I'm a certified running coach. And this is the final episode. This is the race day recap of Chasing PRs. Yes, after 14 weeks of following the gentlemen who are sharing the screen with me as they trained towards their various different race goals, whether that be a half marathon or a full marathon, we have finally arrived at the finish line for this particular series. We are going to recap their experiences on race day, and they were incredible experiences. But uh, everyone, before we get to that, I just kind of want to do a quick recap for everybody who's watching uh, this episode as their first experience with this entire series. Um, just to recap, um, what got this whole thing started was way back in June. Uh, it seems like a long time ago, even though it was just a couple of months back. Um, I was certified as an RRCA running coach. And I was thinking to myself, what would be the best way for me to um, take a first stab at testing my skills as a coach uh, than to get some uh, friends together uh, and see if I could talk them into allowing me to design some training plans for them so that they could uh, achieve their intended goals for fall racing. Um, so uh, I got in touch with Michael and Jack. Um, and we spoke about designing a half marathon plan that would allow them to reach their goal of a 135 or better half marathon at the Myrtle Beach Mini Marathon, which took place on October 17th, just about 48 hours ago now. And um, I also got in touch with a lifelong friend of mine uh, who I grew up with in Toronto, uh, Joel, you see on screen. Uh, his goal for a long time has been to run a Boston qualifying time in a marathon so that uh, he could run Boston. And, uh, you know, uh, we all got together. We all decided that this was going to be a good plan and it would give me an opportunity to uh, hopefully help these guys on their way to their goals. So um, with that, I, I, I sat, sat down and uh, over the space of a couple of weeks, I designed some training plans for them and uh, we started winging it. Week by week, we presented uh, how things went directly to you in just about real time. And uh, there were lots of ups, there were lots of downs, but generally I think we all moved in the right direction and uh, overcame some big hurdles. Um, I'm not gonna reveal anything yet about how race day went for all three of these gentlemen, gentlemen I should say. Uh, we, uh, uh, we will reveal that in due time. But uh, first guys, before we get into this, I was hoping that you guys would share your thoughts on the training cycle just general impressions, what you thought of it, how it went for you, uh, what you thought of me as a coach. Um, and, and really, 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 I want to stress the fact that I'm not here fishing for compliments at all. I really want to learn from this experience. I want to know what I did well. And more importantly, I want to know where I came up short because uh, it's only going to help me to grow as a person and as a coach. So um, guys, let me have it. Um, Michael, let's start with you. Let's, let's go back to uh, you know, all the way back to June when I first told you that I've been certified as a coach and, uh, and, and we decided we were going to work together. Um, what was the whole experience like for you, if you had to sum it up? I mean, yeah, it was great, Paul. I mean, for those of you who don't know, um, Paul's sort of been working with me for a while now, you know, since before he was certified and, and, um, you know, he helped me out with my previous half marathon and then several 5Ks. Um, but this was the first, like, official, you know, full training plan um, laid out and, and workout-based everything. Um, 
it went really well. I felt, you know, initially I was like, this is super long training, um, <laughs> you know, 16 weeks till race day. Um, and that's longer than I've ever done. I think most of mine have been 12 week um, for, for half marathons. So this was definitely, you know, adding, adding another month to that. Um, and I felt like, you know, it went really well. It, the first, uh, you know, we, we called it base building, but really, you know, I, I mean, it was pretty high mileage for me, even that first, first, you know, several weeks, you know, we were over 30 miles. So that's, um, you know, I was hitting new heights every single, every single week of the, the training plan. Um, uh, a few things that I wasn't sure about at the time is, you know, once we got into the later stages of the the plan, you had designed, you know, more track interval work um, than what I was used to. Um, you know, I've done track work for the 5K specific stuff, but not necessarily the half marathon, um, mm -hmm. more of that aerobic, you know, effort, I guess you'd say. So, um, I was worried, uh, not necessarily worried, but it was different in hitting all those track intervals than doing, say, like a long tempo, long sustained tempo effort, you know, every week. So yeah. in the past, I've done that, you know, four or five mile tempo run, you know, in, in the week and then, you know, not done the track work. Mm -hmm. Um, but you sort of incorporated that into the, the progression runs, um, when when we were getting down to the nitty gritty yeah. um so you know those runs were make or break you and i feel like a lot of them <laughs> broke, broke me so yeah but I, you know I, it was a great plan um you know it, it was a grind doing it in the summer yeah exactly yeah yeah that's that's the big thing i think um there's for me you know my my, my preferred training uh season is uh I, you know autumn into winter because uh you know it, you know down here in the south uh and, and jack and, and michael are both us uh, you know live down south as i do and uh you know winter is a much more tolerable season for run training than summer is so um i, I understand exactly what you're saying michael um, it definitely adds to the stress of uh trying to hit speed <laughs> when you're going through a training cycle but uh sir i, I gotta say i i, I appreciate I appreciate you putting up with me. Um, you know, um, I admittedly, um, I've used all of you guys um, as uh, sort of test subjects when it comes to uh, trying out uh, my, my plan because, uh, you know, for, for getting you guys in race ready shape, because, uh, you know, the, the, the more, the more conservative sort of long distance training plans call for 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 a weekly structure uh, that is much more closely akin to what Michael was hinting at there where um, high speed super high intensity work uh, is is not as common when he, when it comes to half marathon and full marathon training plans because the idea being well you know, those are both aerobic type races and there's no need to really go after super heavy, high intensity uh, uh, running when you're training. And um, what I've found in my own personal experience over the last year is that you do not have to cover as many miles in training. You don't have to wear yourself out with super ultra high mileage if you are willing to go after speed and intensity even with these higher mileage races. And that worked for me from 5K through 10K through half marathon. And now as I continue my own personal training towards a marathon, I've found that speed work continues to be relevant and continues to allow me to push hard. And still all of, all of my tests along the way throughout the training cycle, I seem to be hitting my goals, which indicates that I'm gonna be able to uh, achieve my own speed goals with a full marathon using the same methods of training that applied in those shorter race training blocks. And that's what I brought to these guys. And, and um, I'm happy to say that for the most part, <laughs> you can never hope for um, 
everything going perfect. That's just not life for anybody. But um, um, I saw a lot of proof in the way these guys performed over the last 16 weeks that uh, my theory may very well be relevant. So um, without going any deeper into that, I want to bounce this to Jack. Um, Jack, what were your impressions? And I'm especially interested because you're coming at um, this uh, long distance training perspective completely fresh as, as, as kind of a mid distance and short distance uh, speed track kind of guy, I, I, you know, this was a whole new experience for you. You don't, you don't have anything from your past to call on to compare this to. So um, I, I, I'm just dying to get your, your, your frank um, uh, opinion on the past 16 weeks. All right. Well, uh, well, I'll pause you. I think one thing that really kind of resonated just a little while ago, you mentioned like, you know, we were kind of a guinea pig for, for, for you. And as at Sequentially, it was you get you, this whole thing was a guinea pig kind of deal, deal for me too. So, um, in terms of the long distance um, world, um, being being involved in in you know any sort of mileage, particularly organized race um, above three point one miles, to be com completely honest with you. And so, uh, so it definitely was a definitely big task for me. Um, and the fact that I was you know my my whole parameter from high school college was the the middle the middle distance um 400 800 1600 and now all of a sudden you know i'm going past the 5k to 10k let's go do a half a marathon and let's just <laughs> train six weeks and see what we do but you know and you know and i was really you know about after about a, a break from my own personal self um from college all the way up to about um 2018 so uh what three three years ago uh, less three and a half three a little less than three years ago um you know, I, I took a big break and I started just get. I just started wanting to run again. You know, I, I really started running just to, to, to get in shape. There was just a, there was just a point in time in my life where I was just like, you know what, I, I was just so tired of the monotony of the day to day of what life was becoming. And, um, and, and I just found that running was a, 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 a an outlet for me uh, and a kind of an escape and a, a way to, it just made me feel good. Um, yeah. You know, in the very beginning, you know, I really had no intentions of, running races or doing times. I just wanted to run to feel good, to get in shape. And as the years kind of come along, last the year, last year went along, we got into COVID. Uh, um, I started like, I started feeling so good with doing it. I was like, okay, this, I, I can get into this again. And, um, you know, I met folks like, like Michael, who has been a long time friend of me. And then we found that we live right across the street from each other um, a couple of years ago. And he's like, oh yeah, we're running and I'm running too. And then, all of a sudden, like I get talked into 5k time trials and, <laughs> right. and now all of a sudden a, thir a 13 point mile race. And so um, I was like, okay, well, you know, this is like, my gosh, well, like, look what I, how I've become just in the last three years from like where I was to now and being able to actually compete and in, in not, not just participate, but actually compete now. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that, I think that was a big personal win and um, absolutely. And, you know, and so just jumping in into this plan, it was the first actual race plan for me since since probably 2002, 2003 formalized race plan. So um, so honestly, for me, you know, it was something that really I can tell a lot has changed since since those days back in the early 2000s and how we trained. Um, I, you know, I started kind of getting to recall when we always trained back then. We we trained to time like like 50 minute run versus a seven mile run. So we, you know, really looking at the mileage versus the actual time on some of those longer distance ones. So and that was great. I thought for me, because I knew for me to be successful at this race, I think I was able to figure out the speed early on, but it was really to get that distance, get that maintain, like, okay, you be able to get that speed up and maintain that speed for, for so long. And that was just something what I struggled um, a while these last couple of years, just getting the endurance enough endurance enough to be able to, to achieve that. So I felt the last 16, 14, 16 weeks, um, really did help me accomplish that. And I think the biggest win there was through those speed workouts where, where, where it's, we got onto the track um, and, and started accomplishing those intervals that I really truly felt like, yeah, I was, I knew I could get to those speeds, but mm -hmm. it was 
once I then got into those progression drums and yes, it broke me as well as it broke Michael, <laughs> but, but I was sustaining, I, I, as bad as it felt, I was at least able to accomplish it and get the job done those days. So, um, but so with that said, I was, um, very, very, uh, pleased with, um, you know, as we were still going through the process, one of the biggest worries for me was still that whole, okay, am I running enough? I think, and I think we talked about it, before, <laughs> am I getting enough miles in? But just because yeah. I was so terrified that I just don't know if I've built up the mileage enough internally. So, yeah. um, because I, I just hadn't been doing this as long as, as the rest of the crew. And so I guess that would be, would be my only thing. But, but then once we, I started seeing some of the results in those progression runs, particularly let later on in the training cycle resulting from the speed workouts that we were doing midweek, I really truly started seeing the benefit. And then, and we'll talk, I know we'll talk about this later, there, but Michael and after after the race we were like my gosh you know we that we trained to a certain time and by godly look what we did well, look what our mile splits were so um yeah. we said well it was, it, we definitely we definitely trained to a plan that the plan the plan executed well and so um you know so definitely when you when we first said you're gonna have to hold a, a 7 15 miles or so 13.1 miles we were like oh my goodness how in the world we're gonna do this but <laughs> And now, the magic you know, of the like, taper right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now, you know, in your yesterday's comment in, in the Facebook chat, you're like, okay, now sub 90 next. I was like, what are you thinking? But then, but then I'm like, well, he's gonna put up a training plan that's gonna get us to a sub 90. So um, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm just really happy to have this base down and um, look forward. I, I, I truly am excited for the next opportunity. Yeah, well, that's awesome Thank to hear. You. I mean, wow, that's the like, what you just said at the end there. There, there were. That entire speech, Jack, was was golden. There were so many, so many important points for for the viewers, the potential viewers who are watching this right now, especially if they're newer runners. Um, you know, your perspective means so much to me because that's the vast majority of runners out there. The people who are like get, get jumping onto YouTube and trying to learn how to do this running thing for the first time. They know they want to do it. They know they've got the desire, but how do you do it? And 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 for you to 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 bring that perspective of the fresh, new long distance runner is is, is invaluable and it means a lot to me that you said um, you know the plan worked it got you there that just yeah you know warms my heart and makes me feel like I yeah. want to continue coaching and and you know you know thanks for for all of that positivity um, and and one thing I kind of want to um, say in response to to everything you just said there kind of. I don't have time to, to talk about everything, but um, to sort of hit the highlights there, I think, um, you know, of course, as a new runner and you're, you're touching those long distance runs uh, for the first time and every week I'm hitting you with go a little further, go a little further and go try to do it a little faster this time. You know, that's the job of a coach is to kind of push you not to break you, but to kind of try to keep you nervous. <laughs> and um, because that's kind of like what what it takes to kind of keep that adrenaline flowing, keep you motivated. But there's nowhere along the lines, and you'll learn this as you continue on, should you decide to continue on as a distance guy, one failed workout, whether it be on the track, whether it be you're going out for a 15 or a 20 mile or whatever, if you don't hit the mark on that day, that wasn't going to make or break you, dude. You know what I mean? It's the cumulative effect of going out there week after week and hammering it where the highs balance out the lows and you just slowly get stronger and stronger and stronger. And um, it's the stick to itiveness that matters. You know, um, consistency is key. You know, it's, it's the age old, age old phrase of the distance runner, but uh, it, there's no truer statement that could be made. And you bore it out, dude. I mean, uh, I'm not giving away any times yet, but as you hinted a little bit, it pays off in the end. So um, before we get into race results, I wanna talk with Joel. Um, I, I, I'm, you know, as, as the experienced uh, battle-hardened runner in the group, Joel, um, I, I, I'm just dying to know what your takeaway is, what your general uh, thoughts are on the past 16 weeks. Sure. Um, well, yeah, I mean, to start with um, the plan that you 
you designed. Um, very interesting, different from what I'd done in the past. Um, scared me a little bit. Like you said, there was definitely some, uh, some fear. <laughs> um, but, you know, you re somehow you, you really had the starting point lined up with where I was as mm -hmm. a, you know, from a fitness perspective. Yeah. Um, and that's very important. You, do, you never want to start out a runner feeling like, oh, I'm just not there yet. You, but you, you want to be right on that bleeding edge. But yeah, let me yeah. get out of your way. So, so somehow, I mean, right, th somehow you had that nailed um, perfectly. Um, so, you know, th those activities and, um, you know, the track work, the, you know, the really prescribed runs each day of the week, the marathon pace in the long runs, a lot of those things were were different for me and absolutely there's no doubt they worked um which was amazing um the other really cool thing for me was really finally learning the lesson about hydration and fueling yeah um, what what kind of happened in the past was um i think because i wasn't on the edge like i wasn't right on the edge of you know, sort of progressing, mm -hmm. I could, I could be a little dehydrated or, you know, not. There was wiggle room in there. Is what there was saying. a lot of wiggle room. And, you know, I'm sure sometimes it did lead to some, some injuries. Um, this time, especially when I got the right sort of um, uh, hydration, it, it was night and day, yeah. night and day. Um, and just going to bed hydrated, waking up like flexible, being able to walk down the stairs. It was very, it was, it was amazing. Um, so that was great. Um, and the one time that I screwed up with hydration, that was immediately I was, I had that injury back in early August. Yeah. Um, and I'll never forget that. I won't, I will not make that mistake again. And it was yeah. just, I think it was just dehydration plus some track work when you're already fatigued, Yeah, you know? Yeah, it's a dangerous game. Yeah. That is a dangerous game. Um, so the next thing that happened was the plan changed. When the, the U.S. border didn't open, I couldn't get across the board, drive across the border to get to Erie. You adapted the schedule. Um, uh, that was, you know, that was, that was awesome. Um, when there were some bumps in the road, um, you know, five weeks ago, like, you know, injury to the point where I couldn't even run a kilometer. Yeah. And it was um, your left hamstring just to remind uh, yeah. everybody. And for those viewers who are just meeting you guys for the first time, Joel, Joel pulled his left hamstring, uh, the week after his half marathon time trial, which he uh, did exceedingly well at. Um, go ahead. Yeah. So, you know, and I, I was, a, you know, I was a basket case because one, I was used to, um, pretty serious training, you know, for this training cycle. And even before that, you know, a yeah. year before, the, you know, so suddenly I can't, I can't run. Um, and this goal, you know, I've got this goal. I want to, I want to do this thing. And I knew the kind of shape I was in. I was just like beside myself. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, and I was saying all kinds of things to you, not on this channel, but you know, we would talk <laughs> and I'm like, I'm out. I can't, there's no way I can't run a kilometer. Maybe I'll do a half. I don't, I think it's over. Yeah. And you never, you never gave up. You were always positive about it. You know, you never, uh, never let me quit. Not in a, you weren't like, you know, <laughs> get to it. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, you were just like, Oh, well you, you know, you just kept, he just kept saying, well, let's try this. Here's what we're going to try next. Here's what we're going to try next. Um, and maybe you even made a few things up. I don't know. The reverse, <laughs> the reverse, the reverse hey, taper. Hey. I've never heard of that. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> coaching, coaching is as much an art as it is a science. Let's put it that way. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, reverse taper. I think that sounds perfectly reasonable. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> the, the bottom line was like, what I couldn't get my head around was everything you said became true. It was bizarre. 
um, including like waking up and I'm like, well, my, the hamstring is fine. Yeah. Not only is it fine, it feels better than a lot of other things now. <laughs> um, I had it, I had so much focus put on like treatment on that, that I was feeling a lot of discomfort in other places. And, uh, I don't know if there was, you know, it was just because that discomfort was overriding everything else, or I was compensating for it. And who knows? But, uh, anyway, uh, bottom line is, you know, I got, I got to the starting line. That was my, you know, I did sort of rearrange some goals. The first one was just getting to the starting line to run, run the full. I got there, um, which in, which in, in itself, like just two weeks before, I was certain it was impossible. Yeah, yeah. One week before, I was like, "Hey, maybe maybe this will work." A week after that, there I was. Yeah, made so, the start line and yeah, finished. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, finished. So it was and, awesome. Okay, guys. Now. Um, for the for the thank you all three of you for sharing that and, and Joel, you know I got to say you know when you agreed to work with me towards this goal, um, it really humbled me because I you know going in, I knew you had the the most experience as a distance runner. You've been doing this for ten years. You've been doing it since before I started doing it, and um, I knew you'd seen a lot. So I knew um, I was really going to have to come in with my best game, you know? And, um, and I think um, this is true of all three of you, but especially you, Joel, I think uh, you, you forced me to come out of the gate as a coach, guns blazing with full, you know, tr making sure that my knowledge was up to par. You know, there was no room for screwing around and telling too many too many uh, <laughs> untruths to keep you guys uh, motivated, but um, you know, I, I made sure that anything of, of real importance was backed up by fact and by science. And um, you know, I thank all you guys for that. And and um, you know, I, I like to think of myself as as a as a person worthy of people's trust. Um, and and but uh, you know, I beyond that. I think you guys did a great job of making sure that I kept on my toes and that I made sure I had all my facts straight before I opened my mouth. And, um, and, and that, was, that was great. And I thank you guys for that. Um, it was an absolute pleasure to work with you guys from my perspective. And um, you guys are all unbelievable winners. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, this, even, if, even if we never ran a race, even if I su suddenly surprised you guys and said, you know, at the end of this whole, whole training cycle, Hey guys, guess what? There actually isn't any race. <laughs> you know what I mean? You would still all come away as huge winners. I think um, we all learned so much from the experience. Uh, things that we'll all take with us into our next races, into our next training cycles from here on for the rest of our lives that, um, you know, we're all going to continue to grow. But um, I think we all picked up a lot in the last four months from each other. Um, so I, I want to thank you guys all for that. Um, we are running very low on time with Zoom. I don't know if we're going to pull this off. We may have to go into a second session, but Michael, <laughs> to get the ball rolling on the last big reveal of this, um, this video, um, how did you do at the Myrtle Beach Mini Marathon on October 17th? You've been training for a 135 or better half marathon. What was your finish time? Um, yeah, Paul, thanks. My finishing time was 134.59. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> yes, the man has been an absolute <laughs> machine from the beginning. <laughs> he bore that out on race day within a second. <laughs> just incredible. Just incredible. And, and, and yeah, Michael, just take, take a couple of minutes here and, 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 uh, Talk about race day. Talk about the whole experience and what it finally felt like to cross that finish line. Yeah, it was it was a really good um, a really good day. Um, so we were a little worried about the weather initially, but it turned off to be great. Um, it was about fifty five degrees. Um, the only issue was the wind, and it was blowing like fifteen plus miles an hour. So. Um, we probably could have ran faster, um, given that wind wasn't there. It was out in our face a lot of the time. Um, yeah. But, you know, it was great. I mean, 
Jack and I, and he'll talk about his, but, you know, we ran side by side pretty much the whole race. And, you know, I, I think that pushed me a lot because, you know, when you, you have somebody right there with you or you're running in a pack, um, it helps you. And one thing that we noticed, um, and, and this might've been due to the race. I mean, there was about 700 runners in, her, in it. So it's a, it's a pretty large race, but you know, there was like the lead pack and then there was the big pack behind us and we were sort of a no man's land. You know, there was lit, we ran by ourselves the whole race. Wow. Um, so, and, and there was one guy that, that came up and sort of challenged us for maybe a mile around mile eight or nine, somewhere around there. Um, okay. but, um, he fell off pretty quick, you know, within half a mile or so he, he didn't keep up with us. Um, but that's the only person we, we saw really the whole <laughs> race. Um, now what were your thoughts regarding like, how did you guys run the race? I mean, I, 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 I looked at your guys' trauma. I yeah. know this story, but to share with everybody watching. Like, uh, so the plan was to run a, a little slow for the first three miles and then pick right on race pace um, and then step it up for the end. And that's pretty much what I ran. Um, I, I felt like initially I ran the first few a little fast. Um, they were uh, 716, 718, somewhere around there. Um, which 715 was the goal pace. Um, but providing I hadn't ran those at that pace, I don't think I could have finished with the finishing time that I did. Mile six ended up being my slowest mile. Um, it, the course comes onto a greenway and it's, it, it's got some tree cover. So like our watches lost GPS signal. Gotcha. Couldn't, couldn't really tell, you know, exactly what pace we were running we were close but that ended up being the slowest mile i ran at 721 gotcha. um it's not bad at all sir <laughs> you just yeah and looking back it. that that 721 that that was faster than any mile i ran in my previous half marathon so um yeah and then i was able to hold hold strong through um and then the last 5k you know i got to 10 miles and i was really able to negative split that last 5k uh, i just like held it you know tried to hold really conservative there um and then the last 5k i was able to run um a 714 712 703 and then the like last point one is like a 648 pace or something. Yeah, just picked it up when you saw that finish line. Yeah. That's awesome, man. It's just like a textbook perfect. I mean, <laughs> I've been saying this for 16 weeks. Like every Sunday you do your long run and I'd go, yeah, let's chalk up another perfect progression run for Michael. And then you just, <laughs> just, just did it again in the race. It was just awesome. Just awesome. Well, I, I thought hope. I was literally going to die in the race. I mean, <laughs> That, that's awesome seasons. though because that yeah, you left I'm, it all I'm out there pain cave for sure yeah that, i mean that's the perfect race dude you want to feel like death when you cross that finish line like you couldn't possibly hold it for another minute because that means you gave your all and you know you know what state of, your state of the art running is because you could not have given any more and hats off to you man well done thanks paul so michael um Again, congratulations on an amazing race. Um, and for those people who are just meeting you guys now in this one video and checking out uh, all this amazing racing, um, I do want to remind everybody what you had to overcome beyond just the 16 week training cycle, Michael. Um, <laughs> what was it, uh, about a, a month ago or so? Uh, you went out for a morning run. Uh, well, I'm going to leave it to you. Uh, you're, let's get the firsthand experience of, of, of sort of the, the highlights or the lowlights that you might want to say. Lowlights of the 16-week training plan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would love to for you to recite um, <laughs> what nobody should have to put up with when they're training for a race, but uh, somehow you survived it all and nonetheless flourished. Right, right. So yeah, mile um, 11, or mile 11, um, uh, week 11. Um, so about a month ago, 
It was a 14 mile run. Um, I was about eight or nine miles into it, um, you know, sort of heading back towards my house and uh, a car ran a stop sign and hit me, um, pushed me out into the road. And uh, I sort of went up on the hood, beat on the hood and then that the lady stopped and I was able to sort of shuffle off to to the sidewalk and sit down and um, regain my thoughts and composure, I guess. I was okay. Um, so that was a major thing. And, you know, I had to yeah. take it easy the rest of that week. Um, I did have sort of tweaked my Achilles. Um, so I had a little bit of pain, you know, residual pain from that, that week. Um, and then um, fast forward up to race weekend. So this was during my shakeout run on Saturday. Race was Sunday. Shakeout run. Literally 24 hours, less than 24 hours before the gun goes off. You're going out just to loosen up a little bit and do a little run. Yeah. So um, it, it was uh, a lot of sickness in my family throughout the training plan. Uh, more sickness race weekend. It was super hectic. Um Anyways, got out the door late um, for that shakeout, and um, I was about a mile into it, and I uh, get chased by a dog, and the dog bites me in the in the left calf. Um, yeah, so it, it's bleeding. You know, I, I've got um, my legs really sore. It still is now. Um, so we um, that that happened. You know the we got in touch with the the police in in the town there and and they charged the guy with um you know off leash animal and and whatnot so that's been taken care of but <coughs> excuse me a lot of adversity i had to overcome a lot um to get to race day and yeah, exactly <laughs> exactly and hats off to you because you stayed positive throughout sir and um, i think that's what allowed you to uh, run that amazing time you didn't allow anything to stop you. So um, hats off to you and, and congratulations on that 134.59. I know uh, you are not far uh, given the proper course and given uh, a little bit harder training next time around. I have no doubt you are going to be a sub 90 half marathoner in a very short span of time. So um, hopefully I will get to be part of that. <laughs> You know, uh, we none of the guys on screen here with me uh, have talked about future plans yet. I think uh, they all deserve uh, some time off just to relax and uh, live a normal life for a little while before we worry about what's coming in the future. But uh, thank you, Michael, and congratulations again. I want to bounce this now to Jack to talk about the race day experience. And uh, just like we did with Michael, first, Jack, let's start off with a final time for your race. Sure. Thanks, Paul. Well, final time after a, a beautiful, beautiful race morning, um, as Michael mentioned, you know, we were quite worried about the weather head, heading into that um, with the past week, as you know, here in the, in the Carolinas, hot humidity high. And then, you know, the gods kind of uh, descended on us on Saturday night and blew that out of there and provided some really nice weather uh, for Sunday, despite some of that headwind that we were facing um but i'm happy to report i did i i was finishing right there um on on michael's tail um out of one finished with a 135 10 seconds so with 10 seconds little baggage of 10 seconds there but you know awesome. not 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 really too worried about that um you know really in hindsight just being for the first uh you know, establish, you know, the, uh, these establishing, these, well, chasing PRs. Well, this was me, you know, really establishing um, a PR um, yeah. with, with this. An amazing first, one with, is. with the first one, that, you know, the first organized one I've ever done. So overall, very, you know, just really happy with the progression, um, you know, where, you know, where I was just a year ago. Um, there was no way I could have sustained that speed for, for that long. And, um, and, and really, you know, immediately after the race, you know, it, it started it hit me it's like okay I, I i started getting the notes you know i get you know that last mile there was feeling feeling good and i was you know i was telling mike and we were both we were both hit at the same time i i really kind of this at that point with what you're feeling you you just 
I really just missed the mentally, like where, what the distance we had left. Cause you literally had to run past that finish line for a mile and then literally turn around like almost a 90 degree turn mm -hmm. um, up back up to back North. And then there was a zigzaggy line of sidewalk, uh, which was the course that led onto a boardwalk. And I just, I felt, I felt like I just overestimated how much distance um, there really was, there really was left. I thought there was a whole lot more um, that, than there was. Once I saw, obviously, the, the finish line and light, I, I, I felt a really nice kick um, uh, that I, I really regained a good amount of the distance back um, to, to really hit that, that third 135.10. Um, but overall, I mean, it, it was a, it was definitely a good race. Um, my, my, I would agree. We had this, we had to start out, um, hotter than, than we thought just because of that wind was in our face, uh, for yeah. the first three miles. Um, and then again, on, on that back slides coming down North ocean Boulevard, um, back, back towards the finish line. But that first three miles, I mean, if we, if we did not go out as hot as we did, I mean, we, we would have it would have been a little bit of a different story. So I was happy we did. Um, like he said, you know, we, we were out in no man's land for 90% of that race. It was like we were just running out on our normal Saturday progression runs together as exactly what it, what it felt like. I mean, I really That's didn't feel, feel anybody. And um, we did have that one gentleman who, who, uh, you know, tried to challenge us uh, towards, towards uh, mile, mile nine, 10 ish or something. And, um, you know, we, we were able to hold him off um, for the duration of the race. And, you know, but you know, Jack, nobody passed us. That's what I was saying. I was about to say yeah. we had no pa no passing happen on on, on <laughs> Bartlett Stevenson. So um, that's when, stunning. That's amazing. So we, we, we were very we, we could we could really take that one to the bank. Um, so we, we were, you know, from a competitive standpoint, uh, we, we we definitely held our own um, and. And, you know, overall, it was just a very nice uh, first, first uh, experience at me. It really got me excited um, about, about doing this again next year, um, even wow. with the, even with the, you know, 48 hours less, well, actually less than 48 hours from the, um, from the end of the race, you know, with, you know, coach here uh, saying you're going sub 90 next year. I'm like, <laughs> okay, let's go, let's go. Right. So, um, no, I, I was just very, I mean, just, just the amount of progress we were able to make, you know, just going to think about just, just two year, year two, just two years ago, I was just doing this just to kind of try to get just a little bit of shape and feel good. Now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm running 135s half marathons, which is, um, I, I, I honestly didn't think I, I would nowhere be able to do, um, hardly not even a year ago. So I'm um, looking forward to the future in that. And just thank you again, Paul, for all the, um, the insights and the wisdom um, that you were able to lend. It certainly worked. I mean, you, you know, we trained us to, to run a, a, a seven fifteen mile. Michael and I splits were seven fifteen a mile on, <laughs> on the dot. Uh, so I, I can tell, you know, all the viewers that the training plan does work to to the T. So if we just follow it correctly, the results will come. So it was it was great to see that. Looking forward to to the next time. Well, that's all. I'm just so glad to hear that. And I'm glad that you guys felt comfortable enough and experienced enough from your weeks of training that when you had to call an audible for the way you were going to approach your race on race day, that you did that with confidence. And, um, but you knew you stayed within safe parameters so that you didn't blow yourselves up out there and it paid off. And I couldn't be more happy for you, Jack. Um, you know, to, to watch you go from somebody who was obviously a gifted, fast, shorter distance guy. And for you to put the trust in me to kind of learn how to do the long distance thing and, and, you know, in the beginning there, it was a little bit of a battle trying to get you to understand that, um, you know, this is kind of like a long haul situation. You can't blow it all yeah. out at once. Yeah. Um, but you, you learn that lesson quickly. Yeah. And you just, man, dude, <laughs> you're, you're built for this stuff. I mean, I really hope that 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 joy and that that that, yeah. that drive continues and, and stays with you because you have nothing but a bright bright future and you're young enough 
you know, um, you know, I've got a few years on you, so so I can say this with a little bit of perspective. Um, you've got many years of incredible racing ahead of you if you stick with it. Yeah, I definitely, definitely appreciate that. And um, you know, it's one one you know kind of one thing that you you pointed out. It was. Um, you know, it's just trying to, to you know, make, make it, you know, keeping that pace, you know, not, not blowing it out. And that was one thing as a middle distance runner, you're very cosmic of in the early races. Like you, it, it is in a middle distance when you're running 800 and, and you have that first, even after, after the starting point, you know, and you have that one person pushing you and kind of sort of passing you in the beginning, mm -hmm. that's a warning sign, right? In a mile in the 800, that, that's a warning sign. You, you've got, you know, unless there are a rabbit out there, I mean, you're, you're having that, you, it's, it's, it's hard to overcome that. Yeah. But really, I think it was for this process, it was really conditioning in my mind. And we had that happen in, in this crowd. We had a lot of people who that gun went off and they just went, you know, full blaze. And yeah. we had to be okay with, okay, we got to establish this with ourselves. We know the pace, you know, it's much easier now within the day's world. You have these smart watches and everything that got, it's got you tracked and everything, but you know, and, and, and really mentally not worry about in the first mile, two, three, okay, if somebody wants to go, let them go, exactly. you just maintain you, you will get them. <laughs> you exactly, know? exactly. You'll um, see you them in mile 11 this. and you'll blow right yeah. past them. You're going to get them. It's just you, you, you maintain what you've got to do, what's going to feel right for you for that pace. And so really that was the biggest learning for me is to be comfortable enough with that mentally that I know hey it's mile three it's mile four i'm good you know it's and, it, and i don't have to feel like okay you got to go catch this person right now yeah kind of thing so big it was a bit it was a good learning learning curve for me on that one yeah i'm glad to hear you say that because the big thing you know from 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 the coach's side trying to teach you know and i'm not just speaking as a coach i'm also speaking as a as a as somebody learning the lessons because I've been at this for 10 years as a run, long distance runner myself. And one of the big lessons that I had to learn over the years is um, the specificity of training. You know, if you train to run a 715 mile, if you go out running 710s, you're going to pay for it. <laughs> you, yeah. know? you know, I mean, I mean, the body trains, you train your body over that long period to do a very, very specific thing. And it knows the difference yeah, by that yeah, tiny yeah. little oh, yeah. bit. And it's an yeah. easy way to get caught up and, and to end up blowing your race at the end. And, and I, you know, I mean, I think eventually it happens to every runner, but um, I've been there. I've been on the losing side of that where I went out too fast and I pushed too hard and I paid the price later. Um, but uh, you guys, you know, you, you Jack and Michael, um, you guys were just uh, amazing to work with because you, it seemed like everything I tried to teach you guys, you learned it, you went with it, and you made it work. And uh, congratulations, Jack! Again, congratulations, Michael! You guys killed it. Um, Joel, let's 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 talk about some marathoning here. Um, like I said earlier, um, working with you was a big challenge for me because um, you know a lot of the ins and outs already, and uh, there was no room for me to. Um, bullshit <laughs> so uh so um let's uh let's talk about race day and um if you don't mind joel let's talk a little bit more just give people a little bit more of a lead up starting five weeks ago um when when your left hamstring went maybe just give us a little bit of a lead in on how we tried to uh get around that and get you back into uh the ability to run never mind uh race yeah, so the first like very intense incident with with it was actually in early August. I mentioned that a bit a bit earlier, but it kind of relaxed and I was able to continue running and training. Mm -hmm. um, there was another episode, probably two or three weeks later, same same sort of thing. But when I felt that sort of acute right in the right in that spot. I would just, I just backed off and went home. And, and again, it didn't, it didn't get worse, but, uh, five weeks ago we did, um, a time trial. Um, and, um, 
it didn't it didn't bother me during the run it, it did like the the time trial was a half marathon and the goal was to keep uh, i believe it was a 10 10 miles marathon pace yes correct. Maybe, maybe it was either eight or 10 miles it was net downhill so there was no real pressure on the hamstrings really um except there were times when it would be slightly uphill and i could feel it when yeah. when they turn the corner and, and i could feel it but it was a great run um, I was really happy with the result and I was comfortable. Um, but yeah, it was a time, great time trial run. You actually PR'd by one second, I believe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> According to sort of by, by, by Strava time, there's no like for, for Jack and Michael to get that time on, you know, a race clock. It's, that's a different thing than, than getting, you know, sort of your own, your own time. Like that's a real, that's a real accomplishment. Um, cause I noticed that you guys, I think, uh, ran a lot, you ran more than a, than a half really, mm -hmm. uh, according to GPS anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but anyway, so, so the Strava, it still was a great time and there was no one around me. Like I, this was a club sort of event. Yeah. I think the next person to finish behind me was minutes behind me. Yeah. So it was a good, it was a good, it was a good effort. Um, the next uh that sounded a bit cocky <laughs> well, no i don't think so at all i mean yeah. it's not like you're running with a billion people you know <laughs> yeah yeah um so but the net about two days later um and you and i talked and you said um you know let's just go go really easy um the first run after that because there was some pain the next day yeah you, and it uh exacerbated him yeah and and so that's when we started to realize there was a serious problem. So we would take, you, you advised me to rest and then, you know, test it a little bit. And each time we tested it, it actually seemed to be getting worse. Yeah. Um, and ultimately I couldn't run really a kilometer anywhere near marathon pace. And it would just blow up to the point where, you know, it was just, um, I could just feel it pulling all the way down into my calf. And it was just, I you could just tell if I kept, if I keep going, this is going to, I don't know what, what's going to happen here. Yeah. So basically what you advised was, you know, rest and, but some biking, some walking, and then, you know, a little run here and there. Yeah. And, um, that's what, that's what I did. Um, it was five weeks of that. And slowly, you know, we tested it a little Just more and a little challenged more. Challenged it a little bit more often. Yeah, and it and it hung in there. Um, I also, during that period, I had three hour-long massages on that one leg, um, <laughs> which, again, that was actually another good lesson learned. I'm going to be using like it. It worked. I'm going to be. I used to be kind of a little nervous about getting massages during. It was the same way. <laughs> training cycles because I didn't want to get because sometimes you walk out and you're like, well, it felt good at the time, but now I feel kind of weird. I hope something didn't get messed up. Oh, or, yeah. A good deep tissue massage actually makes you feel sore for a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the, um, the, you know, sort of basically, yeah, what we did was kind of maintain cardio. Um, let the hamstring heal yeah. and it did heal. And so you, you know, in Strava, you can just see the mileage was slowly building way up here. Like, you know, 80, You're trying to get you 90. back to where you were in the yeah. five weeks before. Yeah. yeah. So then five weeks out zero and then five, 10, <laughs> and then we just slowly climb back up. Yep. I think the week, the Sunday before, um, I think we did, that was the 10. long run with the 10 miles with like a bunch of them at marathon pace just to make sure that you could even to make sure we should even try to get you to the start line so yeah. we were playing it was touch and go right up into the end there yeah. so so with with that background joel i want you to describe race day um first of all let, let's let's uh let the kid out of the bag let, let's talk about your final finishing time because yes folks i am so first sorry to interject here joel but i just want to 
I want everybody to take your description of race day with the perspective of how proud I am of you that not only did you have the guts to show up for race day, but you completed the run with an amazing time considering what we were up against for over a month trying to yep. get you rehab. So, so with, yep. with that little preamble, take it away. Let's hear about your final finishing time on the race and just talk about the whole race experience. Okay. Um, so the finishing time, the, the, the chip time was um, 3.39.42, um, which is Amazing. not, you know, it's, it's a good time. It's, uh, it's actually my third best time. Um, it's within five or six minutes of a, my personal best from about five years ago. Yep. Um, where I did taper and I, you know, everything was pretty optimal. Yeah. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, on top of it, on top of it, uh, I'll get to I'll get to what actually happened in the in the race. Yeah. So the t the time is a, I'm happy with I'm delighted with the time. I'm absolutely delighted with the time, um, because yeah, I mean even at even at the starting line, I was like, well, let's let's see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So the Georgina Marathon. This was the first ever Georgina Marathon. So first time the course was run for an organized event first time the organizers organized an event wow really <laughs> yeah uh first time the town had to deal with this wow wow um, so just a potential logistical nightmare but they pulled it off they, they did so the organizers did we were standing at the starting line it was quite cold it was windy as hell um i was freezing and they kept having to delay the start because they're trying to get people off the course and people are like, don't know happening? any of this until no now. yeah <laughs> <laughs> people are driving along they're like what are all these pylons what's going on <laughs> um so i think i started about half an hour 35 minutes after which is fine um, yeah, luckily you I, had good weather that day as far as temperature goes anyway. the temperature was cool but i was actually i'm like a oh, great I'm, I'm actually stiffening up here like I, it was, it was cold um, and windy. So the wind, Strava says 20.7 kilometers per hour wind speed. I, I don't know. So that's like 12 that's, miles an hour, 11 or 12 miles. Yeah. An hour. I, I don't, I don't even know if that's correct or not, but um, we started, we, we started running and it, it was kind of a, it's kind of a narrow two lane road, like one one lane in each direction. Mm -hmm. We're we're on half of it. We're, so we're on we're on half of it, and um, there were I don't know. I mean, there were in there was there was a full marathon and a half marathon running concurrently, and there were actually two wheelchair uh, racers as well. They started at the beginning. Cool. So um, we get going, and it's it's clear, like there were people trying to get around and zigzag and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to have to let this space out. And I was running pretty close to what I wanted to do anyway. And I'm actually grateful that I was kind of held to about a five minute per kilometer pace. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm like, I was like, this is, a, I just want to warm up fully and then take it from there. Just let everything warm up. Yep. Um, so I got, it was an out and back course twice. Yeah. And so on the outs, I thought we were actually running. It felt like we were running uphill. Um, the wind was at times there were some curves in the road, but the wind was either right in right in your face or hitting you from the side. And it was so hard that I had glasses. I was you know optimistic that I would need sunglasses. Yeah. Um, because after a downpour, it was so we're. At about kilometer five, downpour. We're soaked. Shoes soaked. Everything soaked. <laughs> the wind. The wind hits. Um, a bit later, glasses on my hat, blown off my hat. I look back. I was like, okay, there's nobody behind me. I run over. I get them. I put them back on. <laughs> I keep going. I get to the. I get to the end. Turn around. I'm like, okay, the wind. There was some. There was some wind at my back. 
So I, I'm like, all right, let's, let's gain some time back. And I did, got going a little faster, came back, got to turn around again and head out again, wind again. And I'm running along and I'm like, okay, interesting problem, hamstring, but not the left one, the right one. <laughs> and I'm like, is it like, and it starts to get worse. And I'm like, all right, if, if it is, it is what it is. If this thing, for some reason, like if I have to stop, uh, I guess I will. I'm, I'm just not going to get, I'm not going to freak out about this. Yeah. So I just, I just uh, kept going. I kept my pace was, my pace was steady. Um, wind picked up and I started, I started feeling myself slow down. Um, the, the, the pack started to spread out a bit and I realized, you know what, I'm kind of going at, this is the best, this is the best I can do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I mean, you know, um, you know, like you alluded to earlier, we tried, we tried an invention of mine called a reverse taper. To was that your invention? You. Nice. <laughs> At least the <laughs> phraseology is at any rate. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, we did what we could, Joel, as far as uh, trying to get you to a 320. Um, yeah. But I mean, uh, yeah, fin finish the story because I, lo I love this. I love the way this progresses before, before I jump in with any thoughts. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I know because it's an out and back twice, I know exactly. I'm just like, all right, just get to the, the turnaround at the top, at the top of the course, you're going to turn around and you're going to pick up pace again because you're going to have the wind at your back. Yeah. Um, just hang in there, hang in there to 30, 31 K. That's all you have to do. 31, 32 K. I get there. Um, turn around, start coming back. And I'm like, wait a sec. I thought this was downhill. This does not, <laughs> I don't think this is downhill. Keep going. Glasses again, fall off. I bend over to pick them up and I'm like a rickety old man at this point, get them, put them back on. <laughs> the wind hits, the crosswind hits so hard. My legs like collide together. That, that's an also a first. So wow. the wind was um, knocking your knees. <laughs> yeah. My, you know, and I'm, then I just start that, that horrible countdown. All right. 11 K no problem. Do it all the time. <laughs> 10k let's keep going yeah and uh did that horrible dance for the next 11k at this point there were people around me that started stopping and they're mm -hmm. kind of and i and i know and i'm like i would love to stop but if i do this whole thing is blown like i'll keep stopping yeah and that's um, always the big challenge at the end of a marathon is just convincing yourself to keep going yeah so because the pain is unbelievable for anybody who hasn't learned one yet. <laughs> oh yeah, it was it was agonizing. But I I knew if I got to this point, it would be like an old school grinded out painful mess. I was excited because we talked earlier on in training, and you I was really excited about not being in agonizing pain. <laughs> you know, like being actually fit enough to you know not get to this point. Yeah. But um, yeah, with uh, two hundred meters to go, I took a sip of my uh, tailwind my and my right calf just like completely cramped up. I'm like, all right, 200 meters. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what, but as you pointed out, it, it's kind of like a, I forget what, it, you know, some sort of racehorse analogy, but I knew we were getting, we were getting there. So I just started getting faster just to end this. Yeah. Quicker. When, when you can see that finish line. Yeah. That central yeah. governor ten, tends to turn itself off and you can find some energy. Yeah. So got turned the corner across the finish line. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was awesome. It was, you know, one of the happiest moments of my life. Dude, so. I'm so glad that you came away with a positive attitude from this race because it was, I mean, a whole experience once, once the, once the, once your hamstring issue, uh, reared its ugly head, um, tr trying to get you, to that start line was a big challenge for both of us. And, um, and you saw it through in such, uh, such a positive way. Um, your heart was in it and that's what allowed you to not just find that start line, but to cross the finish line as well. And I, I just want to make a note that I was watching you through like the real time Garmin, uh, tracker. And I was, uh, me and my wife were, uh, uh, 
in the car waiting for a pizza to be <laughs> cooked and we were like glued to you and we were like screaming your name and rooting for you and watching the splits at every mile and we were like come on joel there's still a chance go 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 <laughs> and i we were like going back and forth i think he realizes he could still pr i still think he realizes he can hit this mark and we were just rooting for you every, every step of the way and, and and i'm so glad that you again that you came away with this from this with a positive attitude because you're a champion to to, to do, do to do what you did under the most adverse uh conditions uh, everybody who's watching this should be utterly proud not just of joel but all, all three of these guys it was amazing to work with them they taught me a lot about running about being a coach um where i need to get stronger where i need to uh you know uh enhance any of the things that i did right um and um thank you guys thank you for everything um it, it was a pleasure I, I feel humbled to have uh, gotten your stamp of um not approval but 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 uh, the fact that you had confidence in me to to, to go through such a long period of of life. I mean, four months is nothing in the grand scheme, but when you're in the midst of it, it's a long time. And uh, you guys stay positive and you taught me a lot throughout and I'll always be thankful for that. So um, guys, uh, I guess we're just gonna call it here. We're running short on time again here, um, but uh, there's no, nothing more I can say. Thank you so much for, for the confidence you've had in me and um, best of luck to all of you in your racing futures and in all aspects of your life. Um, we're probably going to get together for some future racing, um, but uh, I'm not gonna put that on anybody now. Just enjoy the time off because uh, you've earned it. Um, and congratulations on some amazing racing. Um, with that, I just wanna look at the camera and everybody who's watching, if you're looking for a coach, here's the commercial part of it. <laughs> and uh, you don't mind being pushed a little bit tough. Um, come to me. Uh, links are below. Um, and with that, folks, uh, get healthy, stay strong, and keep pushing. Peace out. I'll catch you on another series sometime in the next future, or check out anything else that's on my channel. But uh, guys, good night. Thank you so much.